Do you know that they all have a different signature? Most abductees may have seen a ghost phenomena but attribute it to an alien because they don't know the difference and vice versa and so on. So what I intend to do today is show you a presentation and some photography in where, where it's available of the difference between the alien, the ghost and so on and so on. Didn't have any pictures of angels, although I have some drawings you know, and things like that, and, but uh, not actual pictures of angels. So I was uh, kind of out of that. But uh, we do have enough representations. I think it'll, it'll help us and everything. Uh, we do these presentations, I mean, all over the world. Uh, some of the presentations are actually well liked, even by two different countries, Slovakia and Japan, and they actually struck medals for those presentations, for medical and scientific work in the UFO field. Uh, my wife made this slide for me. She says, you're never going to be happy unless you're doing Mach 4 with your hair on fire. And I said, that's true, sweetie. I, I said, you know, look at you, you know. <laughs> Always go for the best. That didn't work, but... Uh, Anyway, she, uh, she just laughed. Uh, I, I appreciated her making this, that slide for me. Our work has actually showed up on all these different programs. Uh, CNN actually came to my home for three days and did, did uh, some work. Uh, and, I, and, and in all fairness, I'll tell the truth. They did not tell the truth. And uh, I, I hate that, but uh, unfortunately the news. The only news service we got that actually told the story exactly as we told it and didn't interfere, did not change anything, was Fox. That was the only one that ever did the real thing. And I've been on every program you can imagine, I mean, all over the world. That's the, the, the best one that actually told the truth, just stayed out of the way and just reported as usual. And we, of course, do all kinds of things. Uh, our research is into the, not only the alien phenomena, UFOs, implants. I discovered implants in 1960, not because I was smart, but because I happened to be present at age 12 when that happened to me and I was conscious during the event. So I remembered a lot about it, and that's how implant business got started for me. I'm actually uh, uh, ex-intelligence, two years in the Central Intelligence Agency during the Vietnam War. I'm a professional bodyguard. I've done some pretty interesting bodyguard work for some pretty notable people. Uh, one of them was Vice President of the United States, who was a three-alarm idiot. He was Spiro Agnew, and finally he uh, resigned in disgrace, the guy because he was absolutely worthless. Uh, but I have that dubious distinction. And I'm also a licensed private investigator in the state of Texas, and uh, I'm a bounty hunter. I actually uh, catch some of these guys that are doing some pretty bad stuff out there. Um, uh, one of the things I do is teach, and, and when I interview people, I, I teach how to tell people who are lying or telling the truth just by watching them. You don't have to say a word. I'll just ask you questions, and I'll, I'll, I'll figure this out real easy. And it's a trainable skill. It's a real neat thing. Uh, we did this over in England, uh, excuse me, England, in France. Um, another, it, and again, it, my skills are just skills that I've learned over all these years. It's not that I'm particularly smart. It's just that I'm old. And when you get old, you just have to do other things. You know, you want to do something else in life. So I became a hypnotic anesthesia therapist as well. And this is one of our abductees going through surgery on her leg, removing a biological implant. And the only person that had a problem with that that day was the surgeon. He freaked completely out. He said, I cannot believe I'm cutting on a human being with no anesthesia. And uh, she went through the surgery just fine. And these are some other abductees that have gone through it as well. And that's our cardiovascular surgeon removing an object out of this guy's leg and so on. Now, since we got past the promo, let's look at ghosts, aliens, the demonic phenomena and angelics and what they're they're all different every one of them are different and uh, uh, a study how I actually got started in the UFO not necessarily UFO but uh, the paranormal stuff period is uh, it fascinated me that these rocks would go across the desert you know and that just freaked me out so like, wait a minute why has nobody ever seen this stuff happen I mean this thing is drug itself across the, the desert for, and I always figured, you know, well, science, when they, when they see this, they're all these scientists are going to run over there and fix all this stuff and know what to do and give us an answer. Scientists wouldn't even come to look at it. I was amazed. I couldn't believe that. So that really fascinated me that there was things happening out there that science would not look at because they obviously did not have an explanation for it. The UFO work to me is like this. It's like a snail crawling across a razor blade. Uh, He'll do that and not even get hurt, but the fact is the metaphor is clear that uh, there's a lot of stuff out there in the UFO world that 
kind of doesn't make sense and you have to make sense out of it and, and make, it, make it work, so to speak. One of the top people in the world for, uh, uh, in my opinion, for studying the ghost phenomena in that paranormal, paranormal area is a guy named Barry Taft. He's a PhD. He's one of the most serious people you've ever seen in the world. And I mean, brilliant mind, absolutely brilliant. And uh, I met him one, one night at, uh, in Los Angeles. They wanted to do a three camera shoot with me, him, and uh, it, me and him debating uh, the difference between ghosts and demons. And that's how this presentation actually got started. And uh, he said, I actually don't know the difference between how you could tell that. And he said, we're gonna have to ask Daryl. And I gave him my thesis and he said, I concur. He said, uh, I think he's right about it. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. One of the things that's kind of fascinating to me is, why do ghosts have an interest in you or, or, who, or anybody? Why did the alien have an interest in you or me or whomever? Why? Why did the, a demonic or why would an angel, what's, what is their motivation? I mean, it's neat that there's something out there, but why the interest? And one of the things I've found is that you're absolutely unique. In fact, uh, science has discovered uh, after this last few years that there, you have 96% of your DNA that is, they refer to as junk. Let me give you a hint. It's not. And guess who knows that? Not the scientist. Angelics, demonics, aliens, and ghosts. Don't you think we ought to be figuring out what that 96% of DNA is all about? Because somebody out there bigger than us, so to speak, uh, is real interested and are interested in you because every one of you carry it. You carry that same DNA. You're unique. You have an absolutely incredible potential. How many, does anybody know how much your brain you actually realistically use, uh, generally, the, the population in general? Take a guess. 5%. But very good. 5%? Another? another. It's between 5 and 10. How much? Between 5 and 10%. Five, very good. 5 and 10%. One of the latest studies I looked at said you use 0.002% of your brain. If that figure is correct, do you think somebody out there, one of these four groups might be interested in the other 99.98% of your brain you're not using, plus the 96% of your DNA that's probably not being used either? So there may be some reasons why uh, some of these characters out there are interested. The fact is that you have a body, soul, and the spirit. Now, the, the demonic is primarily interested in the body because he, he used to have a body and doesn't have one now, and it's, it's interested in that. So if you have that kind of a difficulty or see somebody with that, that's, that's what they're interested in, and they want to exploit that. That's uh, kind of bizarre. Uh, the soul and spirit are two other aspects of the, of the uh, human being uh, that are fascinating as well. We don't have time to get into all that, but d again, just giving you an idea of what they might be interested in. And you can come to your own conclusion, of course. And I put this little map here of the a piece of the puzzle that's missing in someone's brain. That's the part they're really interested in, the part that you don't know about. Everybody thinks they ha I have the answer to it. Now, most of the time, I, in most cases, people tend to not really know why that happened, such as the case of uh, uh, why an angelic might show up and, or alien or whatever, because usually aliens don't really tell the truth or they, or they don't tell you the whole story, even if they give you part of an answer. So the, the question for me, of course, as an investigator is why? I, I want to know why, why, what the real issue is. The ghost phenomena primarily uh, does these things. It mimics, the, they will often mimic deceased people or dead relatives. And uh, now I'm not making a judgment here, yay or nay. I mean, some of it to me is bad and some of it is, is, is okay. You know what I'm saying? So, but it's up to the individual to make their own, own de determinations. Uh, if something mimics a dead relative and it's not my dead relative, I don't like that. Does that make sense? I mean, if the dead relative is going to be there, let's talk the dead relative, not something that's faking it. Uh, in the Old Testament, they refer to these as a familiar. A familiar uh, in, in ancient Hebrew means it's, it's something that is, uh, it's, a, it's a discarnate spirit that mimics a person's life, and then when they die, it will show up if the relative does go to seance or whatever, it will mimic the life of that person, and it'll, it's so exact, you'll say, well, only that had to be my relative because, I mean, it just had to be. Uh, and that, a familiar will often do this. I'm not saying that's true in every case. I'm just saying you just need to be aware that there, 
two sides of that coin. Uh, sometimes they make noises that quote unquote haunt you. <laughs> uh, they're, uh, they, sometimes certain people get bothered by it. They, it, it happens around them all the time. Uh, Dr. Barry Taft is very uh, blunt about this. I'm very kind and sweet and gentle and I'll, you know, give, leave all kinds of leeway. He doesn't. He says, oh, I can tell you why, why this person is haunted all the time. And it has, he said, he said it, it, the haunting isn't in a house. He said it's following them. It's, the reason it's following him, he says, because it's them. They're creating the haunting. I mean, he's very blunt. I mean, and his science shows that. He's not, we're not talking about somebody who runs around with a little trimeter looking for hot spots and cold spots. This guy is... He is, it's just real science is what he does. He's a really amazing guy. Um, uh, they do their thing a lot of times while you're awake. In other words, people don't generally uh, go to sleep and, and have a ghost experience. They're actually awake when it happens. Uh, if you go on a, 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 like on a ghost walk in a haunting or haunted places, generally you see, if something happens, you see it right there. You're not asleep when it happens like sometimes when an alien phenomenon might occur. Uh, Sometimes it seems to be tied to a certain locale. That's why ghost uh, events and everything, people go to a haunted castle or a haunted whatever because this uh, phenomenon seems to be attached to a location. Um, the thing is that ghosts are kind of interesting too, the ghost phenomena, because you don't manipulate them. You don't tell them what to do. They just appear and do whatever they do, and you're not going to have much to say about it. Some of these, uh, in the ghost phenomena, they claim to be thousands of years old. Not 50 years old like this deceased person in this whatever, but when you pin them down, if you're able to do that and you know what you're doing, and you're skilled at this, you, when you question them for real, they often claim to be a discarnate spirit of a giant thousands of years old. Play with that if you want to. It's fascinating to find what some of these things really identify themselves as. Not my grand, my grandfather's whatever, uncle from whatever. But when you pin them down, if you're able to do that, it takes some skill to do this. They'll actually finally identify themselves as being a discarnate spirit, usually thousands of years old, and they're often described themselves as a giant. That, to me, was absolutely fascinating. They also produce temporal images sometimes on photography. Most of those images, I think most of you probably agree, most of those images, if you do get some image, and I'll show some this morning, are misty or they're black and white, or they're white and you know, like etheric, this sort of thing, uh, ectoplasmic, whatever, you know. It, it, it's ten, it ten, they tend to be black and white. Don't, you don't usually see color pictures of my uncle who died 300 years ago. I mean, generally that doesn't happen. It's usually black and white or almost x-ray-like. I mean, like real distinct, but not in color. Uh, this is a, uh, this picture was, this was just a picture taken of these two guys. And uh, the interesting, uh, they didn't, they never saw this. This showed up on their film and it kind of blew these guys away. Uh, this was taken at 10 p.m. on August the 6th in uh, Poole, Dorset, England. It was never seen or noticed by them. This one down here, a different photo was taken in uh, 2008 in Auckland, New Zealand. Again, neither one of these guys, neither one of the people here saw any of this phenomena whatsoever. Again, notice it's black and white or misty or you know this sort of thing. It's uh, it's a a, 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 a white color. Uh, the interesting thing about these two is they both look alien-like in their. But that's just that's just a. Uh, some people that saw this uh, who are a, of the alien persuasion said, well, these are alien beings. Uh, it's possible. The only way I would think these might be alien related is if the alien is in transition. In other words, he hasn't manifested in 3D yet. He's still in 1 or 2D. I mean, it's, he's, he hasn't come to fruition. But these guys claim they never saw him and these people never saw it. So, but again, this distinction between the ghost and the UFO phenomena is the fact these guys are misty and this sort of thing. So we'll use that kind of as a representation of possibly a ghost here. Um, one of my friend, Bill, B, Bill Beans here back east, uh, showed me this. He said, this is a ghost thing. It showed up in our house. And I said, Bill, uh, I'm not picking on you, but that's not a ghost. Oh, yeah, it's a ghost. Look at, the, look at that robe and everything. It's a ghost. And I said, um, it might be, Bill. I don't know. I can't prove it because it wasn't there. I don't know. But uh, I said, in the UFO phenomenon, I said, if an entity shows up 
that's alien related and he has either clothing on or a robe and you're not going to find this in books if he's got clothing on or a robe or any type of distinction like that as opposed to many aliens show up without any clothing on whatsoever if they have any kind of clothing and particularly a robe it's a distinction of a of a, it's like a, a rank I said that's not a ghost well it's got to be a ghost I said Bill you're trying to sell a book for ghost you need ghost pictures don't you you're an abductee as well aren't you I said <laughs> have any missing time during this time well, yeah, but what's that? Have to, I said, you're missing the point. Uh, this, this, and more than likely, in fact, is again an alien being manifesting. He's not even fully in 3D yet. Uh, and another hint is the fact that there's some coloration in, in the clothing itself. So this is this is a hint. Doesn't mean it is that. It just means that it. You, have, you just have to consider. It. Ghosts are not interested in your neurology. The alien is. He is. So, uh, ghosts don't concern themselves with nukes and end time scenarios and so on. The alien does. When I was six years old, they showed me an end time scenario and I was actually in it and I was like freaking out like, you know, people running around crazy and in the world and a lot of these colors were in it. And I couldn't figure out, well, what? And all of a sudden I realized something's wrong with this picture. Why am I not running around acting crazy? And, in, and, and my wife, she's a Trekkie, she likes Star Trek and, uh, and my brother does, so they showed me this, and I, I just don't care about it. I don't care one way or the other about Star Trek. And they showed me a film one night, and it, they had this thing called a holodeck. And I said, oh my gosh, that was like what happened. Because once I realized that, why am I not running around crazy like everyone else? And I just like, kind of shook my head like, what's this weird, six years old, everything stopped, and all of a sudden, I'm, there's no end time scenario going on. It was all set up, that was a setup. It was imagery created, probably in my own mind, for the part. But it was like the holodeck. I mean, it was, it was all fake. It wasn't anything that was real. It was, it was realistic, but there's not anything real about it. But the ghosts don't do this to people. The alien does. So that's another distinction. Uh, ghost hinted messages uh, from the departed. Usually, with the ghost phenomenon, there's a message, and it's personal. In many of these cases, if there's something, if there's going to be anything brought out about it, it that's that's going to be the way it goes down. Ghosts don't care about mating and they don't uh, <laughs> uh, this, uh, let's see which one it is here, uh, this, this dog here was abducted with the two people and the two children in a desert in, in uh, northern New Mexico and the lady came back pregnant the missing fetus syndrome happened, she didn't have the baby, just disappeared but the dog came back pregnant at the same time. These dogs are, this dog was never around anyone. They don't allow their dog out or anything. They live in California. And when it had babies, it had all these different dogs. That was kind of weird. Uh, ghosts don't do that. The alien does. So it's kind of another hint. The ghost didn't do it to us. That's really bright, isn't it? So I'll read it to you. These are some pictures I shot at the Burlington Ghost Walk last year. Uh, some of the pictures were taken by other people, and these are some pictures I took myself. And some of the pictures that I took were different than other people, and there are two explanations on why nothing showed up in my camera, but did show up in other people's cameras. Uh, obviously, as an investigator, with my cop hat on is my first response is get your camera fixed because you got a leak for light in your camera. If you, if you know, unless uh, now the second explanation is. Uh, they didn't want Daryl to photograph them. Now that's possible too. You know, I'm I'm open to other possibilities here, but I didn't get anything on my picture, on my camera. But other people did, and I'm going to show you what they, most of what they show, they got, and it was pretty interesting stuff. Uh, anyway, this is some fun. We had a lot of fun. We it was so fun out there. And Mary is so funny. She said, "Oh, Daryl, the weather were ghosts out there. You just didn't see them." And I said, "Hey, I could be just dense. You know, uh, I, it's okay. I, you know." I don't know everything. She said, look at the big heart over you. They just love you. I said, that's pretty cool. Uh, but, my, but, but again, my camera didn't pick this stuff up, but other people's did. And uh, so I sent these to be, to be independent and not, uh, not biased. I sent these to Brazil to an investigator there and had, without any discussion and sent these to them and let them, they, they did the analysis here. I didn't do any of this. I, I, I felt since I was in the event, I had no business. 
And anyway, some of the things they found were, look at the orb here, like that, okay? These little orbs show up. She, this, the investigator said, wow, look at that, you know? That, but no one saw any of this stuff. No one saw anything. And she says, is this sunset? No, it's about like one o'clock in the morning or something. It was very cold out there. Uh, no one saw any of these colors. No one saw uh, these mists and things like that. This is uh, the mist very close up. Uh, and again, uh, most people thought it was a ghost, but it is ghost-like because, again, it's black and white. It's a mist type thing. So, and it could have been. I don't know. I, I, here's a close-up of it. I mean, just what does that mean? And again, they, there was another heart appeared over Daryl. You know, isn't that great? <laughs> uh, uh, the ghost phenomena does exist. It does. But again... I, I'm an investigator. I want to see the beef. You know, I mean, where's it at? I've seen alien phenomena. I've seen ghost phenomena too. I have, but I didn't see anything that night. And I don't know anybody that did see anything that night. But we, but pictures were taken, and these things did show up on some people's cameras, but not mine. Uh, I'm not really sure why, other than the, my camera works real well. And here's, and someone said, look at the eyes there and the face and everything. Uh, see, see it there. And there's a close-up of it. You see that? And I said, yeah, but I can turn it sideways and see something else, too. That, that's not really good investigation to me. I said, we should have, someone there should have felt something or got a message or something ghost-related, right? To me, that would, have been, that would have been more of a telltale sign. Someone said there's different dimensions here because see one dimension there. Or even giant fingers were touching you. Look at that, Daryl. Giant fingers, you know. Well, <laughs> I just didn't see any giant people out there. And nor and we we a lot of us did hold, held hands and did all kind of things see if we could feel anything or sense anything. I personally never felt anything. Others may have, but I didn't know about it. Again, the heart showed up again in that crate. <laughs> so and here's a wispy thing that was uh, different de descriptions of what that might have been. I again I don't know. I'm not an authority in that, so I, I don't know. And someone said these are like spirit snakes. I said no, that's a car. Those are the lights uh, flashing on the car, and your when you can't your camera. You move your camera. I said, that's what happens when you see a light and you move your camera. UFO pictures, same way. People say, UFO is in multi dimensions because look at the streak behind it. No, you're not holding your camera still. You hold your camera still, it'll actually show just the light and not a string behind it. Uh, but again, it doesn't mean that there aren't different things like that out there. It just, and this was the description of a spirit phenomenon as well. And it might have been, but again, no one ever saw it. Consciously is what I'm saying. Uh, the very, this was a very bright uh, uh, phenomenon that showed up on the film, but again, none of us reported seeing anything like that. We're looking. This was uh, another phenomenon that showed up. Uh, again, uh, the light is from this, this hand here, from this individual, something in their hand, probably a camera flashing, and this other person flash, you're ca shooting the shot, and you're getting a, a, you're getting a picture of whatever's in that person's hand, the light, and you're, you're moving it. And, Reflection you're off a button and so on. But uh, the ghost phenomena is real. It is. And uh, but that particular night, no one saw anything. It doesn't mean it didn't real. It, it just, but we did have pictures. And sometimes that happens. Like the two guys in those two pictures in, in, uh, that I showed you in the beginning of entities or whatever was there, but no one ever saw them. So it doesn't mean that just because you don't see it, it wasn't there. Because that's, that's just, uh, that's just a, a perception doesn't make it there or not there. Ghost phenomena doesn't do the following. The ghost phenomena does not make crop circles. That's kind of an obvious statement, but it, but it, these are, it, I'm just giving you some illustrations of their, their actual distinctions between these things. The, uh, they don't, the ghosts don't implant people. Ghosts don't put fluorescence on people like we see with a, in abduction cases from physical contact. Uh, ghosts don't abduct people. Ghosts don't fly in a craft in a, that I know of. They don't fly around in UFOs, and they don't mutilate animals or people, which the UFO phenomena, we do have plenty of evidence that that exists. In fact, we've got another 30-some cases out of Brazil recently, one of them human, an elderly lady. Uh, ghosts don't have bodies. This is the famous Wyoming mummy found in 1932. They found actually about five of these, but uh, that was just the only one that shows up that people know about. Uh, Again, uh, so that's not a ghost. I can tell you right now, it's not a ghost. It's a, it was actually in a museum for a while until somebody stole it. But that's not a ghost. That's something else. This is a unique photo I'm going to show you here. 
uh, an abductee in California kept trying to convince me of his phenomena, and he says, but, and he said, I know you're all about physical evidence. I said, I am. He said, Mr. Sims, he said, a, a friend of mine who was living with me at the, in my apartment took my car out one day, and he ran a red light. And I said, okay. He said, and of course I have a blow up of this. There's an alien in the back seat behind his friend right there. He say, well, they just photoshopped that and they made it up. No, they didn't. Could I have the original? That came from the state of California. That's what they send you when you owe the ticket. You owe like 350 bucks, pay up, and that's the evidence they're going to use in court to prosecute you if you don't pay the fine. What the state of California didn't notice and look at is who's sitting in the back seat. There's an alien head right there, crystal clear. And the guy experienced missing time during the time he took his friend's car without permission. The state of California filmed an alien during an, abdu an abduction event. This is really bizarre. I'm really very impressed with that little thing. The guy said, it's really real, I promise you. And he sent me the original. I have the original. There are, this, I didn't, I have not even allowed a copy to be made of it. What aliens do? They do their thing uh, often while you're awake or asleep. Uh, and then induce an altered state of consciousness where you think you saw a three-foot owl with large black eyes or you saw a deer that was very kind to you or an elk with large black eyes or a wolf. With, well, what's a wolf doing in your room at 3 o'clock in the morning? Well, it was just had large black eyes. No, it wasn't a wolf. It wasn't a deer. It's the alien, and he's leaving the image of you of something else. Or Casper the Friendly Ghost, sometimes the alien will mimic that in your consciousness. To, he doesn't want you to remember him as an alien in most cases. He doesn't like to do that. Uh, uh, they do abduct folks. They mimic uh, relatives that are alive. <laughs> they actually do. And uh, that's how sometimes they abduct. One lady, uh, this is really weird, in California, and a very straight-laced lady, uh, she heard this on her door. Two o'clock in the morning, I said, why is it you live upstairs with your husband, your bedroom, you woke up exactly three o'clock in the morning, go downstairs, nobody in the house heard it, you wake up, open the front door, and, and there is a, a, a deceased relative standing there. She said, I don't know. I said, what'd you do? She said, well, he wanted me to go with him. I said, okay. What'd you do? She said, I did. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'm not going. <laughs> You come inside and we'll talk, but ain't going out there. Uh, anyway, so uh, this was uh, part of an alien phenomenon, and it's, it's gone on in their family for, for off and on for years. Really weird. Stuff. And they mim it's not, there was no de deceased relative there. It was, they were mimicking the imagery of the deceased to get her to leave, to go away from the house so they could do whatever they're going to do. Uh, sometimes that happens. They produce longer and higher quality imagery on photos and film, which I will show you in a moment. They claim that you belong to them and that they are your real parents, that your parents aren't your parents at all. Many abductees and contactees hear that all the time. That's part of your programming. Doesn't matter if you can prove your parents are your actual parents. They want you to believe that. Uh, often there'll be fuzzy images in color of an alien entity. What happens, there's, there's two things that will show up in a, the UFO phenomena. Uh, and again, you're not going to read this in books. This is, your, this, is, this is something to keep a note in your head or write it down. If you see a light close to you, and it's not, quote, unquote, in your opinion, a ghost phenomenon, there's not a message attached or whatever, and you're an abductee, highly likely that if that thing has hard edges, that's a probe. It's not an entity. It's a probe. Well, what if it's fuzzy edged? It's usually the entity himself. In transition, he's either coming towards you or leaving you and he's fixing to manifest if he's coming towards you. In other words, you're fixing to experience missing time and you just photographed him on the way to you. We have some people who actually did this. It's really, really amazing stuff. Um, okay, hard edges or probes if it's alien related. Uh, soft, fuzzy edges is, is in most cases an alien in transition. And in what's really amazing the, the solid edges ones uh, will be usually a solid color. It'll be a, a green or a metallic or something like that, but they're very hard edged. It's, uh, you can see that's an object or something. Uh, but with the alien himself, if he's in, he's coming towards you and he's in transition coming from the craft and everything, uh, it'll be fuzzy. You're like, what is that? That's, 
isn't it so beautiful? What is it? And all of a sudden, you're sitting here. That was 2 o'clock in the morning. Then you're sitting here doing the same thing at 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock in the morning. Where did it go? The event's over. They just brought you back. But you saw it coming, and, I mean, so to speak. Um, here are some fuzzy edged UFOs. Notice that they're not wispy and black and white. They're in color, beautiful color. This is Brazil. And in fact, the lady that did the imagery for me for the ghost phenomena here for, for the ghost walk in Brazil, these, they go on vigils just out most of the night or all night long, sometimes two and three days at a time. And they study the, the UFO phenomena. And I asked them questions. I said, but when you're seeing this, this is incredible. Look, she said, yes, it was most interesting. And everybody saw it, and it was, it was fascinating. And I said, but wait a minute, wait. And notice this fuzzy. What does that mean? It's probably an alien entity. It's either coming toward you or it's leaving you, probably coming towards you. And they said, well, we, never, we don't think it was an alien entity. I said, that's okay. That's just a difference of opinion. And she says, well, what makes you think that what we're seeing here is alien entity, Daryl? It's a UFO. And I said, well, uh, probably it's not. Uh, see, there's some other pictures of it, different manifestations, same object. I said, they said you filmed this? They said, yeah, at different distances. And I said, okay. I said, I want to ask one question. Did anybody experience missing time? She said, no, we never thought about that. I said, well, now that you're thinking about it, did you? Yes. <laughs> it's an entity coming toward you. You just filmed the guy coming after you. He, did, he hadn't manifested yet. He didn't want you to see him in 3D. Uh, and again, here's some, uh, another location, another place, uh, again, of uh, 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 manifestations of either a, a craft. Now... Sometimes you'll see craft at a distance. Two people, these lovely people out here were telling me about craft. I said, what is hard edge or soft edge? Some of the craft are hard edge, some of them are fuzzy. What does that mean? In my opinion, my opinion, when you see a craft that's real fuzzy, but it's definitely a craft at a distance, it means there's somebody on board. They're lit up and they're probably picking somebody up. I call them the pe cosmic pizza delivery service because they're either picking you up or delivering you back but you're going somewhere. And or they're not necessarily you, but somebody. They're, you may be watching an abduction event and they're, they're fixing to pick somebody up. When that thing lights up with all kinds of colors, somebody's going to dinner uh, somewhere else. Uh, again, more and more of these things. But notice how, how fuzzy edged they are. And the, most of these that you're seeing here are small. They were very small. They saw them at a distance, maybe uh, 50 feet or two or 300 feet or further away and some of them were were much bigger but again if it's fuzzy edge there's an entity involved he's either in there and if it's very small it's actually him coming towards you or leaving you and most of the time you don't film him leaving you film him coming towards you if you're lucky enough to do that uh, now these are uh, manifestations of things that transition a UFO phenomenon and they're mo they they it's like they're molding or something they're actually transposing and they're moving and uh changing shape and so on rather fascinating stuff uh really really amazing stuff they this this is just really amazing stuff now that's craft but notice it's lit up what does that mean somebody's on board for dinner or visiting us or whatever whatever it is they're probably picking somebody up here uh, and again, if it's uh, hard edged, it's going to be a probe. <clears throat> Ghosts don't make crop circles. That's kind of an obvious thing, but again, you need to make the distinction so that you can make more distinctions so you can actually be very clear about what's happening or isn't happening in this phenomena. Alien phenomena doesn't do the following. They don't haunt people. They don't possess folks. And they don't do ghost things. Aliens don't do that. They just don't. Um, aliens don't abduct ghosts either. <laughs> kind of obvious, isn't it? But it, a little humor here. Uh, agreed. 
but I'm just, you have to make these, the obvious distinctions, but you have to carry those distinctions over to finer distinctions so that you are very aware of what, if you're going to investigate or be an investigator or just want to be aware, then you, can, you really need to make some really hard and fast distinctions of the different phenomena. Um, aliens don't always get along at the time. This is an alien here. This is an actual 8x10 photograph in color given to me by a surgical uh, nurse who photographed this. Now, this is funny. This is an illegal alien's home in Dallas, Texas, 1993. They can't call the cops because why? They might deport them. Oh, we've got aliens in our backyard, you know. <laughs> That's not a good thing to report. Uh, anyway, so <laughs> this is really uh, amazing. Here's his head, large bulbous head here, little mouth, little, barely see a nose, large black eye here, you can see that, and a light reflecting off of it, a large bump on his head with protuberance, and very large bulbous head. As he, he's li lying down, his arm here is in a defensive position. Anybody ever seen somebody in a police action where somebody's got cuts on them and they, the body's laying there? That's a defensive position. If somebody was, had a knife they were cutting, that's, that's how they know you were attacked by a knife. He's in a defensive position. Why is he in a defensive position? Because, excuse me, that's what he actually looks like. Let me, so you can kind of see, I'll go back to the picture. That's him laying down there. That's his arm up in a defensive position. His other arm is direction and right here like this. There's his fingers right there. And he's, uh, there's his hand up in a defensive position. Let's go back. Not that far. Um, the reason he's defending himself is because you see the alien's head here, the large bulbous head, and the big scooped out area here on the side of his head on both sides, and the large round eye there in the middle. That's a mantis being. And this guy's in the way. What's happening? They're interested in getting to the people inside the house. The surgical nurse, these are friends of hers, and she they call her at 2.30 in the morning, brave soul, walks down the middle of the street with her camera. Good investigator. And I know her well. She's a very credible woman. She goes down at 2.30 in the morning, just marches down there and going to help her friends. You know, she thinks it's a ghost phenomenon. That's what she thinks. It's what they think. They don't know. They're abductees, but they don't get it. This is the first time they've actually seen stuff visibly, and they're, they're scared. They don't know what to think. And she's inside the house. That's the glass door, and she sees movement outside. So very smart lady, rather than trying to figure it out, she snaps the her high-tech camera at the glass, the bright spots you see right in the middle, that's the blowback of the camera, that's the light, the flash of the camera. But she caught, and she never saw this, I never have explained this to him. I just let them, she said, you see the alien there and all that, and I said, I do, I can see that. You see even the bicep on him, real skinny. But uh, the bicep there, long, tenuous uh, forearm and large hands here. Uh, but she never saw this, I never explained this to him because I didn't want to Tell him what was going on. She said, I can't figure out why he's got his arm up like that. And I said, well, that's a defensive position, sweetie. Well, why has he got his arm up? Well, it doesn't make any sense. Well, it does if somebody's fixing to knock you down. And that's the guy that's doing it right there. I would love to. I did not get to interview these people. I would love to. I guarantee you there's missing time in this story. I have the negatives, the originals, and the color glossy pictures that she gave me that morning in 19, I think it's 1993. Um, amazing stuff. Absolutely amazing. Fascinating stuff. That's alien, believe me. It's not, uh, what's amazing is uh, some of the photography, we took the night off the picture. You can actually do that. Guess what's in the backyard back there? Other entities. One of them has a long, skinny neck looking back at the, like this at the camera. In other words, he sees something going on. He, some, there's a commotion here, obviously. This thing's knocking this one down for whatever reason, probably trying to get in the room to get to the whoever's in the room. And it uh, wasn't a real pleasant experience that night uh, for anybody. They did not report uh, everybody being happy and being in the higher school of consciousness or anything. A uh, real traumatic event for everybody, especially the family. 45% of uh, these people are Native American and Indian Irish. I suspect that uh, that's not necessarily true of other people that are, uh, unless they're abductees, of course, but generally in a group of people, I suspect any, probably most kind of people can probably, if they have a ghost phenomenon, any, you don't have to be of any particular ethnic background. I suspect that people see them if they're there 
or man manifest. If there's 50 people in the room, you can probably all see it at the same time, I would think. And again, it depends on the entity and what they're actually trying to do. Um, in the UFO phenomena, uh, when the Vargina incident happened, this uh, actual alien entity, several of them were actually seen in Vargina, Brazil, and uh, actually caught by the fire brigade and the local police, which is one and the same thing. Not real high-tech folks up there. Uh, one military police officer made this mistake of picking this little guy, one of these guys up. It's the only one that touched him. He was dead in six months. His parents to this day cannot get the autopsy reports to find out why their son died mysteriously from touching that particular entity. Some of these entities are not real good to touch because it has an extreme caustic smell to it. And I suspect that the whatever's on the surface of his skin uh, penetrated the, the military police officer and he died in six months. I mean, that was it. But the UFO community wants us to see uh, the, these, the, those particular aliens as really wonderful. But what the truth was, is the, the city of Virginia made a fountain and everything, and they made an image of what they actually saw. Isn't that interesting that the UFO people, with their artwork, portrayed one thing, but what the people saw was vastly different? Look at the claws on this thing, four and five inch claws. I mean, what do you need claws to fly a spaceship for? Hmm, I don't know. At large red eyes, the no black eye cover, eye cover, the eye cover's missing, and three large bumps on his head. Of course, three Roman Catholic girls were on the way to school one morning, and they saw the first one. That's what started the whole thing. And they thought it was a little boy. He's crouched down, kind of hiding under the bushes, and they thought, what, is he crying or what? And they looked over, and all of a sudden they said, are you okay? And he looks up with three big red bumps on his head, uh, and three big red eyes, three big red eyes, and they like, whoa, and they screamed, ran away. Guess what they thought it was? The devil. Of course, he's got red eyes and got some horns, you know, so that's got to be the devil. Well, it wasn't. It was an alien entity. In fact, the craft was actually shot down, and uh, the Brazilians actually got it. And, uh, but several of these entities were caught and seen many, by many of the people in, the, in that city. Further explanation is uh, interesting. I found a mask used in northern Africa. They would put this mask on during ceremony for the ones who came down from the sky. You say, well, what does that have to do with the price of tea in China? Notice the three bumps on the head, just like the guy in Virginia like 5,000 years ago. May have been the same guys in, involved in their case, too, long time ago. Some of the alien uh, artifacts, is, they say, well, this all started 50 years ago with Roswell. No, it didn't. Trust me on that. This is King Tut's tomb, and this is a six-inch fetus of a human in the tomb. What in the world is this next to it? I suspect that wasn't his sister. With alien phenomena, they've been misidentified all in all kinds of cultures as ghosts, goblins, uh, all kinds of things. And some of this, they perpetrate themselves. Uh, some people think this is an alien. Maybe it is. I don't know. Fascinating story behind it. Fascinating. Um, uh, this is some cute computer art given to me by my a friend. Um, I'm supposed to be finished this at 10.30, is that correct? Yeah, yeah I, I just want to make sure. I never go over time. Okay, we'll, we have plenty of time now. Uh, this is some uh, computer art made by one of my abductees. Absolutely brilliant guy. And, of course, this is the business end of the UFO. What's really amazing is there's this one guy involved in the craft, and you have to question people carefully or you won't ever find this out. Was there, the, oh, they were doing this, they were doing that. No, I, forget them. Was there anybody kind of in charge? Oh, yeah, it was the guy who never would show himself. He always stayed in the dark. Or there was a creature in the dark back there, always watched everything, but he never would show himself. Many abductees will describe this, and they, they, they sensed or saw part of him, and they, and he's, you're not supposed to know who he is. You're not supposed to see him. It's, not, it's against the rules. So uh, anyway, a uh, little bit more information for those of you interested in the UFO aspect of it. There's what some of the so-called alien phenomena look like, and I've explained this in detail in my last presentation. And uh, I described these as not aliens from other planets, but in fact transgenics that have been made, manufactured for your interaction between you and whoever made them. And I'm, I think I made a pretty good case for that yesterday and then showed some of the DNA evidence that we have because we actually got some DNA from one of them, from one of our abductees. Fascinating stuff. Anyway, what do you think the chances are of aliens from another planet looking like a Bigfoot? Zero. No actuarial for it. 
What are the chances of an alien coming from another planet looking like a six foot praying mantis? None. What about one of them being one of the ant people, probably ant DNA? And I showed yesterday actually some antenna on them in petroglyphs that the Navajos painted long, long ago. Because they probably, they call them the ant people because they probably are. That's the DNA. And so on and so on. So what are the chance of all this happening? It's easier to use Occam's razor when you ask the question. Probably they didn't all come from another planet. It's more likely somebody came here and got the DNA and produced that for interaction with you, representing themselves as alien beings from another world. That's just my cop hat on. Don't take that offensively. That's just, that's just police work. Okay? Um, dream, uh, uh, many abductees will have dreams of being inside a craft and all kinds of things. Often these dreams are indicative of a real event, but not the, some of the details are not profoundly correct because your, your consciousness is being played with by these entities. It really is. If I took a photograph of the alien right next to you while he's abducting you, your description is going to be something like that. But if you look at the picture carefully, if I took a photo, could get a photograph, it'd look more like the, the actual photograph we saw the alien entity get knocked down. He actually looks a little different than a gray. It's, you can tell it's a gray kind of being, but they're actually physically different. Because this is the image they want you to imagine them as. They don't want you to see some of this other stuff. They're, for whatever reason, known to themselves, they don't want to be actually identified in the lineup, so to speak. They, they don't want that to happen. Um, this is a three spots uh, in the backyard of a case. I have all black family in uh, Pennsylvania. The craft landed in their backyard. Well, they just said that. No, actually something landed there and nothing's grown in those three spots where the, where the craft touched down uh, for years. I went there a year later and it's still nothing still grows there. It just never happens. Um, the amazing thing about this case, it's all black family and they... Everybody in the family, including three generations of people, are abductees with the exception of one person, the daddy, who can't figure out what's wrong with this family. They must be nuts. But he loves them and he knows they're all telling the truth. So he's having a real problem. Everybody's having experience but him. And uh, uh, it's, it's really amazing. And I asked the, these black people, I said, well, what nationality are you? You know, I was over the phone. And the lady said, well, we're black, Mr. Sims. And I said, no, sweetie, I understand that. What else are you? She said, oh, we're Cherokee Irish. Now, how did I know that? 45% of abductees are. When I asked the same question in, in Turkey, they all said, well, we're all Turks. I said, no, you're Cherokee, you're, you're Irish. You're Cherokee Irish or you're Native American. That's in there too, many of you. No, we're not, we're all Turks. Well, they did some DNA tests in the last five years. Guess what? They found Turks are related to certain Native American tribes here in the United States. If you go to the, on the internet and, and Google and type in the word Sequoia, Google it, hit image. What you'll get is a picture of Sequoia, who's a Cherokee, one of our, like, hot shots in our, our tribe. And he's sitting there smoking his little pipe, you know, and he's, he shows a little alphabet that he made for the Cherokee language, and he's smiling and everything, you know, it's not a photograph. But the, but the interesting thing about Sequoia is he's got, a, a, he's got a, an Arab turban on. How do you suppose that happens? Well, that's called contact with another race. That's how that happens. Interesting stuff. The aliens actually claim that you're one of theirs. Uh, probably that's not true, but it might be. Some people think it is. Uh, but I thought that was a funny little picture there. You, know? <laughs> you kind of don't look like them. Uh, uh, the alien, the ghosts don't leave. Phys don't have physical hands. This is uh, to look at the long fingers and the suction cups on the end of it. This is. Have you ever seen a headboard that has a beautiful headboard that's got a in someone's bedroom? A, People have really got some nice furniture, unlike me. Uh, and they, they have this velour uh, uh, cover on it. Yeah. Well, this lady kept asking me, this one of my abductees in Houston, she kept asking me, you know, well, how can those hands be in that position? What is that? What does that mean? Well, uh, I don't want to answer. I don't want her alarmed. The only way those hands are going to get on that bed, if you were in the bed at the time, it had to be on you. And I don't think she wants to hear that. I don't mean on like friendly. We get DNA from these type of cases too, but it's usually vaginally. 
So I'm not sure she wanted to hear that. So I didn't tell her. I said, well, it, that's fascinating. The two fingers down here this way and two are this way. Uh, no opposing th uh, thumb that we, we can really notice, but four fingers on this thing, and there appear to be suction cups on the end of them. A lot of evidence in her case. She is she has stuff, uh, uh, absolutely amazing stuff in her case. I found this hand. You remember the, the all-black family I told you about? They had this hand here. Uh, on the, the, the entity left the impression on the wall. I, of course, cut the sheetrock out and took it with me, and they agreed that I could do that. The mother, unfortunately, drew a line around it so you could see what it looks like. That hand of the alien that was knocked down, you know, by it has a defensive position. We, we tested that, and it's the exact same hand. 20 years earlier in another abduction. Is that amazing or what? Wow. It's incredible. I do have the sheetrock. The husband came in and says, what the hell are you doing to my wall? <laughs> I'm showing the thing. I'm taking the, and his wife, she's the boss. She said, I told him he could have it. And I said, uh, yes, sir, I do whatever she says. And he just left the room. Boy, you, you don't mess with her. She is the boss. And she said, and I asked the lady, I said, why is it black people don't report abductions? I said, I've got like one case or two cases. Why do they, do you, get a, you guys get abducted like we do. Why don't you report this? Says we, oh, we don't. She said, well, it's cultural. She said, nobody wants to admit that. You know, I said, okay. I, 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 that's not, I'm not, it's not a judgment. I'm just asking. And I said, do you have a different name for this? And she said, oh, yeah, it's riding the witch. They knew exactly what it was. What's riding the witch mean? It's like it gets on your chest and sits there. And you're breathing hard. <gasps> that's, that's called abduction. That's when they, when they come in and get you and haul you off. You know, that's, she said, oh, well, we call it riding the witch. I said, you can call it anything you want. I said, but I, I, suspect, that wasn't, I suspect that wasn't the witch. On the on your wall, and she said, "No, it, well, that wasn't a witch." <laughs> I said, okay. Um, two handprints were left holographically in glass as the entity went through a wall in Houston, Texas. This is a police officer abductee. He called me privately. I, I saw the holographic images of these little hands. Notice that their their uh, the hands are actually gnarled. That's what's left of the hand. I, man, that is weird stuff. I have the glass, by the way. Paid three hundred dollars to have it removed. Okay, um, let's get on a little further here. Um, we do find physical evidence, like I said, like that lady and other people, uh, sexual assaults uh, from certain types of entities. They do do this to people. It's an unpleasant aspect of this phenomena. Uh, this is me examining the bedspread of a lady uh, who told an absolutely horrific story, and uh, the evidence is there. DNA evidence is there. Uh, anyway, another story. This is some of the black light and other equipment I use, some of the nanometer links that we find certain kind of evidence in, 389 nanometers, 465 nanometers, and so on and so on. Uh, if, uh, anyway, this particular nanometer link, 365 here, they actually found blood on the shroud of Turin. That device I've got in the other room, that's what that does. That's the same nanometer link they found blood on the shroud of Turin hundreds of years after the fact. Kind of interesting stuff. And for those of you high tech interested, there are the nanometer links that you need to find all kinds of stuff in UV. For those of you that have that kind of an interest, fluorescence. Remember the lady I told you had the fingers over the bed. You know the thing was apparently on her if she, if she was in the bed, she, like she said. Uh, this is uh, her arm with fluorescence on it, large uh, fluorescence on her arm here. But the, this is the first time we've ever seen this ever in the history of. Fluorescence we found on an abduction case, writing on her arm. He said, well, that's the alien writing. I'm sure that means uh, welcome to planet Earth or something. It doesn't. Uh, it, is, it, it appears to be uh, an ancient Russian writing. And I suspect that what happened is one of the things they do is they take clothes off of you when you're, often there's more people there than just you. I suspect when they take the necklace off of you, and put it down. He's got fluorescence on his hands, it's like sweat. He put it, I, my suspicion is he took the necklace off this other lady who was Russian, put it down on the thing, and she's in there and everything, and she put her arm against the necklace, which would, the fluorescence would come off on your skin. It'll penetrate your skin subdermally on contact. That's why you see the Russian language backwards on her arm in fluorescence. It's not because the aliens wrote it on there because they wanted you to read something in Russian. Uh, don't, I just don't think that's the case at all. It's Cyrillic, actually. Um, 
fascinating case. The woman's got all kinds of evidence. Amazing. Really 100% credible woman. Very, very wonderful lady. Uh, aliens leave marks on you in the visible range. All kinds of bizarre, bizarre stuff. Uh, this guy got the whole end of his neck torn off after his abduction. Uh, how'd you like to wake up the next morning with part of your neck missing? Uh, think he had an event or is that with sleep paralysis? Wow. Mental health, mental retardation sent me this patient. The, the psychiatrist herself was an abductee and admitted it. And had the same marks that the crazy guy did on him. She had them on herself too. How do you tell yourself you're crazy, you know, and you're the, you're the psych? One abductee had seven scoop marks down his legs. I've got a scoop mark on my leg when I was four. This is a lady in Chile. The, the entity picked her up. Uh, you can see the size of the handprints. They're about that big. This is a real big guy. Picked her up and left caustic burns on her stomach. The doctor has absolutely no explanation for what the caustic burns actually are. This is... Um, some of these abductees are actually strapped down, physically restrained, feet and hands, while they do whatever it is they're doing to you. Uh, some of them get, have real negative feelings about this, and this is one of them. This is, a, this is, the, this is that same lady in, in Houston. This is her, the, her arm and her hands. Uh, she's had some pretty rough events. Uh, this is my Brazilian daughter-in-law. They put marked her on the back of the neck with this mark. What's incredible about that mark, and that's after tattoo removal, by the way. It's not a tattoo. Tattoo removal did nothing to her neck. What's amazing is I went, uh, they asked me to come to Puerto Rico, and the State Department walked me, you know, that was a real diplomatic thing. They walked us right through. We didn't have to go through security or anything. The State Department guy met me there with my wife. And we went in, and he saw the presentation, saw that mark on my, daughter, my daughter-in-law's neck. He freaked completely. He showed me this photograph of the exact same mark in San Francisco. He said, why would I take a picture of a mark like that on a graffiti wall in San Francisco? I said, because the gang, buster, the gang guy that did this probably had an alien experience and just used that as part of the gang sign. He's an abductee, too, and so are you. And he started shaking and everything. I said... People don't usually get nervous like that unless you've had an experience. That's, that's memory, buddy. That's why you shake. Your body remembers everything. I don't care whether you do or not. Your body remembers. So these are the calling cards that aliens leave on people. Uh, ghosts don't do that sort of thing. Uh, implants left in you, ghosts don't do that. Not going to happen. Um, some abductees get real upset with their experiences, and they don't like it. Some of them want to get even. Uh, Ghosts don't mutilate animals and people. This is a deer recently mutilated by the alien phenomena. Uh, cattle mutilations occur all over the world. There's some down in Brazil, some down in here in Africa. <laughs> little joke, a little humor here. Got to keep you awake. <laughs> uh, you should look at uh, the evidence that we find in infrared, ultraviolet, visible light, x-ray, everything. Uh, DNA fluorescent tagging actually exists. We're doing it now as human beings. I suspect the aliens have been doing it for quite a while. How do you think they found you? Oh, they just picked me out. No, it's not accidental. You go question your grandma, grandpa, aunts and uncles, you'll find abductees in your family. You are not alone, and you're not the only one, and it's your lineage. And it's not everybody in your family. It's just certain ones. They don't need everybody. They just need just a sampling of you. That's all. False fluorescence. This is not fluorescence. A baby, my friend of mine said, look what my kid did to the baby. <laughs> that is a permanent magic marker. Colored the other baby up a little bit. Uh, that was not fun. Some of the, some of the abductees or contactees uh, remember their experiences, positive, pleasant, wonderful, and everything. The, this lady did. Unfortunately, there was a man standing there watching the event, and he, this is what he painted and said, uh, that's not what I saw. That's what he saw. Well, to her, she was in school of higher consciousness getting educated. Um, he said, no, that's not what happened. Uh, if you want to go after these guys and study this phenomenon, my suggestion is you get a helmet because there may be a trap out there. It may, there may be more information out there than you know about, and you better be prepared and you better know what you're doing because some of this stuff gets pretty rough, especially in the alien phenomena. Uh, they find out you're messing with them and interfering. You may have some, uh, not abduction events, but you may have some encounters. You may not like the results. How would I know that? 
Uh, one of my abductees fought back. Uh, this is 1993, and she tore the eye cover off of the guy. Oh my gosh, was he in pain? No, he wasn't. He actually didn't mind at all. Didn't bother him in the least. I mean, he wanted it back, but it's not his eye. I've known that since I was four years old, my first abduction. That's not his eye. Think of it as cosmic sunglasses. Well, what was it then? That black eye there is not, it's just a, it's a lens cover. It actually, and of course then you've got other entities that show up in UFO phenomena, the hybrids and MIBs and things like that. Don't wait for the alien to tell you the truth who they are, because I'm telling you, it's like women waiting for the perfect man. You're never going to get an answer. <laughs> it's not going to happen. What both ghosts and aliens do, both can have and appear to have overlords. Most of you see ghost phenomena don't, ha don't know how to make contact or figure out how to d get any further past that other than a photograph or something. If you can and you actually know what you're doing, you can actually uh, find out that they actually have bosses, so to speak. Somebody's in charge of them. They don't just roam around doing this stuff by themselves. Somebody's in charge. There's both, that's true in the alien phenomena and it's also true in the ghost phenomena. They have little regard for the victim overall will often fabricate or lie or deliberately deceive uh, information. Uh, sometimes will tell truthful information if it suits their purpose. Only if it suits them. It's not for you, it's for their purpose. Can mimic living relatives or even the alien hunter. And some of my abductees, this is really funny, actually, one, in, one lady in Turkey, I got there in Turkey and uh, she was sitting there and said, I've been waiting to see you. And I said, yes, ma'am. I said, uh, and I met her and everything. She said, oh, I know all about you. And I said, uh, how's that? And I said, you, you, have you seen a video of me? She said, no. She said, here's a drawing I made of you. She said, I've seen you long, year, many years ago. I said, that's me much younger. And she said, yeah. How'd you get a drawing of me like that? And she said, I just made it. And I said, why how, why'd you make a drawing of me? I've had this happen over and over, many times. I, I can show you the pictures. I said, well, why did you do that? And she says, uh, I was shown this image and told, they told me not to ever give you information. Okay. Had that happen quite a few times. I said, somebody knows somebody's on her tail. She said, I suspect that's the case. And she said, I know all about your cats too, your tiger and your lions and things. She said, they showed me images of that too. Fascinating stuff. Tell me about your cats. You know, <laughs> I mean, she knew all about it. I mean, they, they had showed her the whole stuff. Uh, anyway, I've had that happen numerous times. This is the pictures that she drew. I said, that's me younger, sweetie. That's not me now. She said, I know that. I was shown this picture a long time ago. I said, why are you breaking the rules? She said, because I want to know what's going on. I don't care what they said. I want to know what's going on. They're not telling me the truth, and I want to know. I said, okay. These are other, this is other images uh, that it, it, people have, have actually written descriptions or even drawn things. There are other things that show up, too. These MIB-type guys, where they wear a fedora, long clothes, 1950s clothes, American. Went to Slovakia. Ladies describing me a MIB in Slovakia, she said, I don't understand, he wore an American, like 1950s uh, uh, car 54, where are you, in your TV program? He wore that, that, that says fedora, and she said, yeah, like that in the long coat. And I said, isn't that interesting? Why is it they're wearing American clothes, and why is it they're, they can't get their dress code up to, you know, modern? She said, I don't know. She said, but it makes me sound like I'm a liar. I said, no ma'am, it makes you sound like you're telling the truth. Because people who lie make things up and make them modern. People who tell the truth describe them exactly as they are. And that thing's wearing 1950s clothes. I said, they do that. I said, I, I just I appreciate your integrity and your honesty. Uh, other people show up too, shadow creatures and so on. Some people say, are they, are they ghosts or not? There, there are actually other entities out there that are not ghost or alien. That are something else. And some people refer to them as the uh, ghost people, the uh, uh, shadow people and so on. And how do you know all this stuff about aliens and so on? Well, actually, I was a captive audience at age four. And not because I wanted to, but because it just happened. And then later they got my son at age six, and that really made me mad. They see, you mess with me, and I can get along with it. You mess with my children, and I'll come after you, and I'll hunt you down. You leave my children alone. You should leave your children alone, too. You mess with me if you want to mess with somebody. You know, I, I'm, I can figure it out. I'll deal with it but not my kids. That's, you don't do that. Major differences. 
Ghost phenomena carries with it the weight of something personal, like a message, this is real important, or a formal, former humanized entity that once was, that may be a wandering spirit, lost soul, or wandering lost soul, foul spirit, wicked spirit. There are all kinds of names for these in different cultures all over the world. Uh, some are otherworldly and can make manifestations occasionally. Sometimes they don't. Uh, the alien phenomena carries with it the idea of you being the target, the object of selection. Realistically, they are not interested in you. They have no, uh, no self-identity themselves or their own. They are, in fact, in my opinion, manufactured, hatched, cloned, or uh, manufactured way. And they have a collective consciousness. They don't have individuality like you and I understand it at all. And uh, they live in abject fear of their superiors. Abject terror. Many abductees who've been there know what I'm talking about. They know this. Uh, they've gotten beyond the, the uh, programming. Angelics, they're powerful, they're beautiful, they're supernatural. Uh, they, uh, what's really interesting, as opposed to, or are there bad angels and good angels? Yes, there are. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, there are both. How do you know the difference between a good angel and a bad angel? Well, if an angelic actually shows up and there are aliens anywhere around, guess what happens to the alien? We actually had this happen in three cases. One of them is a very famous case, not my case, but a very famous one. The alien can't get out of there fast enough. I mean absolute terror of an, an angelic being. Terror. Why is that? I'll let you figure that one out. That's interesting. Three cases where that happened. One of them was in my own home with my Brazilian daughter-in-law getting abducted. And the third night, they come three times, three o'clock in the morning, three days in a row. On the third day, guess who shows up? Something worse than the alien. Because she, the second, first night, she picked up a piece of stove wood and was going to hit it. <laughs> I mean, she had, we had a fireplace and she, she picked up some wood to protect herself. And the alien freaked out. Next night, it came back with something else. It was a lot worse than, it's actually his bo her boss, its boss. And I, she, that thing was so horrific. She said, I just dropped firewood. I, I couldn't. Nothing could resist that. It was just incredible. I said, fascinating, isn't it? And she starts crying. I said, why are you crying? She says, <gasps> an angel showed up to the wall. I said, sweetie, we prayed about that the night before. And guess, guess who shows up? An angelic. Guess what happens to the bad guy and the alien? They couldn't get out of there fast enough. She had this most incredible presence I've ever seen. It was wonderful. I said, describe it. She said, well, Godlike, and I said, pretty much. That's what angelics are like. They're pretty neat, and they're. Uh, what's really weird is the the alien won't stay away. From <laughs> These guys take off as fast as they can. Uh, if it's an angelic that is faking it, they're not of God, but they're fallen. How will you know that? If you worship them, they will accept the worship. A pure angelic from God will never accept worship. Never. It's even in the Bible. Yes? When you said you were praying about that the night before, yes. trying to summon an angel to yes. appear? What happened is uh, she had three events in a row. The first night she woke up, next morning she woke up, and she's crying incoherently, and my wife and I are like, what? You know, she's staying with us. She fled Brazil to get away from the alien, thinking, I got away. Big surprise. They came with you. And so she's uh, freaking out, and she told us the story. She picked up the stove wood, and it, it ran away because it, it was afraid she was going to bust it in the head, and she was. So it left. So she, said, she starts crying. I said, what's the problem? She says, well, they're, they're coming back. And I said, well, how do you know that, sweetie? She said, they always come three times in a row when they come. Use once a year for her, once a year or two. Three times in a row, 3 o'clock in the morning, and... Uh, and so it's going, to, it's going to be three events in a row. And I said, okay. I said, well, I'll tell you what. Tomorrow night, guess what's going to happen? Or tonight, the alien hunter's going to be awake. And we'll see who deals with me. I said, maybe I'll get abducted, whatever. I don't know. But I don't think that's going to happen. I said, I'm not scared anymore, nor am I overwhelmed, nor am I in awe. I said, I hunt them that hunted me and hunted my son. It's a different story now. I'm a trained observer. Things are different now. So anyway, about 2 o'clock in the morning, I'm sitting up at my computer waiting for 3 o'clock, and they were working on my stuff, writing on a book. And I think, and I, it, it came to me, it's really interesting. Uh, I don't know, this is really, usually this is not stuff we tell about our cases. And I said, uh, 
you know, I have an incredible opportunity here. If this thing's going to happen three times in a row, why ruin it the second time? I got one more chance, right? To interact. I want an interaction. That's what I do. Why don't I see if something spiritual might work as one of the tests? You can't hurt. They're going to come back again, right? So no big deal. No harm, no foul. So I prayed about it, and I absolutely felt in my heart that that was the right thing to do is to just to pray about it and leave that with the Lord. No proof, just that's just what I thought. That's, that was the feeling that I had. So I went to bed. Next morning, get up and she's, and I thought, oh my gosh, did I mess up this time? I didn't know. So what happened? She says, he came back. And I said, oh, okay. And she's, she's crying. I said, oh my gosh. And she says, and I picked up the stove wood and it didn't run away. And I thought, she thought, well, it's supposed to be afraid of me because I could harm it. And she said, then something else came to the wall. She said, Daryl, it absolutely, I was so in awe and terror of this thing. She said, I dropped the firewood. There's absolutely nothing anybody could have done against this thing. And it was going to make this event happen. I said, got it. And I said, and uh, she starts crying. And I said, what are you crying for? She said, I'm not crying for sadness. I'm crying for joy. In an abduction? She said, no. She said, and then an angel came through the wall right after that. And she, those two got out of there as fast as they could. They ran. They they got out of there instantly. They did not want to face the angel. And uh, she said, I thought you said you were going to be there last night. And I said, um. And so I told her the truth. And I told her what happened. And I said, I just felt like that was the right thing to do. I said, it's okay. I promise I'll be there tonight. Third time, remember? Remember? Three times? I'll be there. I swear I'll be there. I said, I don't care who shows up. Alien Hunter will be sitting in that. I'll be there. I promise. And I was. 2.45 in the morning, she's laying on this little pallet we made for her in, in, the, in the, the living room and uh, until she found her place to stay. And um, she's on this little pallet. 2, 2.45 in the morning, she sits up and, and uh, <laughs> oh, my God. And I said, it's all right. Go back to sleep. Because it's going to happen at 3. I said, I'm here. And I'm sitting there with the most beautiful Japanese sword you've ever seen in your life. Over a thousand dollars work done on just the blade alone. What does that mean? It's slice and dice time. Oh my God, what does that mean? Well, who knows? So I'm sitting there. Three o'clock in the morning, she sets up in slow motion and looks at me and says, they know you're here. I said, yes, they do. But now they know that I know that I know that they know, and now I know that they know that I know. I said, one of these days, they're going to come through that wall, and somebody else is going to be here besides the victim, and they're not going to like that. You say, well, that's crazy and all that. Really? The only piece of actual physical evidence we have is from a, a guy in the United States uh, this last year, heard about this story, placed a sword next to his bed, got tired of his wife being sexually assaulted, tired of it. The bruisings and everything are all apparent. And himself being taken, he said, they make mistakes, right? They, I said, sometimes they forget to tell you you're paralyzed or whatever. He said, I'm hoping one day that that'll happen. And that happened. And then he came in the room, and he goes, whoosh, and cut a chunk out of the alien. I have the DNA. I think it won't work. See, when he's in transition, you can't harm him. But when he gets in 3D, he's just as vulnerable as you are. The two giant Rottweilers that are in the other room attacked the other two alien entities. In the morning, everybody woke up in bed. The two dogs were back in their cages, in their indoor place. The two dogs died within 60 days. They starved to death. The veterinarian said they literally starved to death. They cannot assimilate protein of any kind, apparently from biting these entities. Piece of the alien that I got, don't worry about it. He's just a toaster. He's manufactured, cloned, or hatched. They got a million more just like him. Don't worry about a thing. In fact, if he doesn't do the right job, they'll get rid of him anyway. It's a, it's not, it's a society, society you can't even imagine. They're not like us. Don't make them human. They're not. They're not. They will either make you love them or whatever, uh, or they'll make you fear them, one of the two. It's just a control mechanism. It's business. That's all it is. They're just doing it for someone else. Anyway, that's the long and the short of that story. Uh, that's not, the famous Calvin Parker case. 
And does anybody remember that guy? The two police officers got abducted many years ago on a police deal. But him and his partner got abducted. One came off the craft and abductee. One came off a, a contactee. Amazing case. Well, the famous Calvin Parker case, later he got abducted again. And again, Angelic showed up. Guess what happened to everybody? All the aliens, <laughs> they took off in all directions. He said, I never told anybody that. And I said, I never told anybody my stuff either. I said, I kept it quiet. I said, but... Uh, Angelics are not alien at all, not even begin to be related. The person who uh, used the sword on the alien yes. got the DNA. Did anything happen to him after that? Uh, he still gets abducted. He still has events that happen. Yes, it's ongoing still. still. He's very upset about that. But, but uh, he is delighted. I showed the DNA evidence yesterday. It's got a university. Absolutely, their hair standing straight up. It's not human. It's not anything. It's not anything on this planet. It's got two different things a uh, plant and animal together and it's neither neither one of them appear to be from here and they're not like you with your uh, daughter-in-law yes uh, did you actually see anything no they never would come through the wall they they she said that she set up she in so, slow motion she wasn't scared or anything she said they know you're here i said i know that this is not my first rodeo we we actually have had uh, cases where women had the artificial insemination, the, the, the pregnancy, I actually have sonograms of the entity in them. I'm not making this stuff up. MUFON said that it's not going on. It does go on. I've got the sonograms. I know better. The stuff is very real. This stuff is happening to these people. Angels protect people. Angels care for people. Remember the story of Jesus in, the, in Gethsemane, an angel came and cared for him. Wouldn't you like to have that angel's job? Wasn't that great? Kind of neat stuff. Uh, Charlie Hickson case, that was Calvin Parker and Charlie Hickson. He came off an a, a contactee and the other one came off an abductee because he had a big cut across his stomach and got into a fight with the entity. Aliens versus the angel, uh, uh, angels and aliens. Angels, some, angel, some of them are called uh, angels, demons, fairies, dwarves, elves. Look, the, a, the alien has masked himself in every country all over the world. They, uh, they call, they're called the jinn when you go to Islam. That's what they're called and they're scared of them. Really afraid because they may not bring you back. Angels are different. The angels in life, they help people. They actually are they're wonderful. Uh, all kinds of great stories about angels. Uh, people, kid, kids getting protected. I, I have no idea why I'm alive to this day. I've done things in my life as a kid. It, absolutely incredible stuff. I, there's absolutely no question in my life that Angelic has been involved saving me. Kids do stupid stuff. And it's just incredible how... Uh, people in car wrecks have told me, in conscious case, my, my daughter-in-law and everything, angelic showing up there and everything. Uh, whoever was in that room did not want to mess with the angelic. Uh, uh, demonization, I'll, go, I'll be very quick about this. It's kind of a negative aspect of it. Uh, demonization, um, I've actually seen three cases of demonization in my lifetime. This is not mental illness. I've seen mental illness. I've uh, worked with mentally ill patients, had... Uh, Tri-County uh, and other uh, mental health organizations send people to me to work with uh, as a, a master level NLP. I'm really good at what I do therapy-wise and can do stuff that some of those folks can't. That's why they send them to me um, and so on. My point is simply this. Uh, what the three cases of demon possession I saw, uh, two were in Korea, one in the United States. I assure you it wasn't mental illness. It was supernatural. And when it looked at you through the eyes of the, of the person they had possessed, Something non-human is looking at you, and it's not an alien. I've seen the aliens up close. I, I know them, too. And this is not, it's not a ghost. It is a, it is demonic. It is the, it is the de demons. If you want to read the biblical version of it, go to the book of Isaiah. It describes them in detail, and it refers to them as the giants. It says the giants, or the raphim is the word used, and it's called the, the deceased. The giants, the, in the, in the ancient times, in the Old Testament, he said that the scripture says they will not rise in the resurrection. Why? Because they're already here. They didn't die and go to hell or go to heaven or wherever, or purgatory. They didn't go anywhere. They're still here. And they want a body to infest. That's who they are. And they will identify. If you ever get them to identify themselves, they'll tell you that they're giants and they're ancient. Thousands and thousands of years ago. Really fascinating stuff. But uh, they're supernatural, they're powerful. And I'll uh, give you one quick illustration of, the, of this case I saw in Korea. I was a military police officer, and I'm a tough guy, fourth degree black belt in the martial arts. And I mean, I'm not much afraid of very many things. Already been abducted, so I already went through that mess. 
And uh, when I was coming out of the gate one night, uh, the gate eight, uh, the, in Korea's outside, basically. It's the military installation inside. I'm coming out and uh, just going over to get a Coke at the, uh, at the, the bar to get a Dr. Pepper or something to drink because I, I don't drink, but I socialize with my buddies. And uh, I'm on the way out and everything. And I, just as I get out the gate, there's this three, these two, uh, excuse me, three girls in this taxi cab. And they, one of them gets out of the car. She's on the side next to me. And uh, just, and they're dressed in brocade. That's, these are rich people. If you wear brocade, you're rich in Korea. People just don't wear that. Yeah, fancy. And well, I can figure out, what are they doing in the dump like this? You know? She slams the door of the car and her brocade dress, part of her dress gets caught in the door. Anybody know how tough brocade is? It's real strong material. She doesn't open the door. She grabs, she, all of a sudden, her, her whole consciousness changes. She looks and she's angry that their brocade got slammed in the door, looks up for slow motion, grabs the brocade and tears it off out of the door to begin with. Now I think, now that's really weird. It's a pretty strong gal. I mean, small lady, that's, you're awful strong. And in she, her whole consciousness changed. She runs around to the front of the, of the taxi cab. She walks right, slow motion around the front of the taxi, walks around the front. The taxi driver sees her and he's like, what? And all these other people start coming out of the building so they think it's a big fight or something going on. She takes her arm, bare arm, and beats the windshield until it starts shattering. Not a cut, not a scratch on her arm anywhere. Didn't bother her in the least. And then uh, the, the tax cab driver runs over, you pay, you pay, you know. <laughs> he looks at her, he freaks out and runs off. He, he don't want to deal with whatever he's looking at him. He runs off, gets a Korean policeman. Korean policeman comes back with his little pistol, you know, one bullet in it, kind of a Barney Fife guy, oh, you know, shaking and everything, pointing out. He's scared. He puts his gun back and he takes off. Whatever it is that's in that woman, you better get out of the way. When Jesus Nazareth talks about this uh, Gad, madman of Gadareth, that's not a metaphor, folks. There were 6,000 of them inside that guy. 6,000, a legion. That's what it called itself, legion for we are many. Fascinating stuff. This entourage went on for till 2.30 in the morning. I followed around and watched this thing. I couldn't believe it. Many more things happened. She walked over to, uh, to our, our gate and there's a concrete uh, square thing where you you know you step up on a little step. It's that thick. I'm a fourth degree black belt in the martial arts. I break four bricks with a head thrust. I can pop, pop four bricks with a head thrust. What she did, I couldn't begin to do. She sat down, knelt down in front of that concrete step in front of everybody and beat her head about 30 times against that concrete as hard as she could. I was waiting for her, her head to split open. There wasn't even a discoloration on her skin when she finished. Again, whenever she turned around and looked at you, it's someone else looking at you. How do you know if it's a demon? Uh, it's kind of obvious. It's supernatural. It's not human. And it's looking at you. And uh, fascinating. Uh, the, interesting, the fallen ones, they're interested in your DNA too. It's interesting, the curious that the alien is, and so are they. That was kind of bizarre. In ancient times, um, in the sixth chapter of Genesis, and also in uh, Vedic literature and other literature, same story, just a different version of it, uh, angelics uh, came down, took women, bred with them, and produced giants. Fascinating stuff. Absolutely fascinating. This is a, an amulet that was found in Turkey, ancient Turkey. This is a gray, and that is a giant. Is that interesting or what? Ancient. Well, what are they doing together? That's a real good question. That's a real good question. I don't know. I'll leave that to you. Nobody's been able to figure this out. <laughs> this is really amazing. I've been to Turkey twice, and I'll tell you, this is, uh, uh, it's just incredible. Queen Nefertiti. Everybody's, I was Queen Nefertiti in a former life. I've met at least 15 women who were Queen Nefertiti in their former life. I assure you, there was only one Queen Nefertiti. Uh, so 14 of them got to be wrong. What's wrong with ne Queen Nefertiti? When she wore that big hat, because she had a big head that matched, that she had to use the hat to hide her head in. Uh, were these people genetically altered? In my opinion, they were. All her children were the same way. Every one of them. You go to, you go to uh, South America, and I've got to close in two minutes. Uh, South America and to Peru, and what do you find? The big skulls, you know, the oblong skulls and everything. She's got it too. The oblong skulls are found in Brazil, excuse me, India, uh, uh, obviously in Egypt and uh, in Peru as well. 
and uh, fascinating stuff, you know. Again, another elongated head. Well, what's that? Uh, in King Tut's tomb. Um, what works and doesn't work on uh, demonics? They usually don't respond well to holy water or food offerings and so on. Actually, you're, they're baiting you. That's, that really doesn't work. If he responds to it, he's faking it. He's letting you think you're in control. What they do respond to, obviously, from New Testament and, and other people who have dealt with this sort of thing and realize they, uh, they actually have a fear of the name of Jesus, and especially whenever you mention the blood for sin. Uh, you want to destroy a seance? This is a good way to begin. You'll just ruin the whole meeting. <laughs> Why? Because there's something in that that they fear. Uh, they fear faith in a, in, a, uh, in a person. They don't care about your thought process or what you think. The only, the only thing that motivates them apparently is faith. That's kind of fascinating stuff to know about the and now there's a difference between a split personality and this well these are just people with split personalities no they're not a person with a split personality or multiple personality disorder vastly different than alien. they don't have supernatural strength they don't do all these weird bizarre things they have separate personalities that have simply split because of trauma in the person's life world of difference between the two not the same phenomena uh fascinating stuff uh Really, really weird, really weird stuff. Um, what happens if I get abducted or these things happen to me? You'll probably be all right. We're all still here, right? Most of us are okay from the, this sort of thing. You'll be okay. And it's all, it's all right. Uh, you're going to be fine. I, I just love this, this little picture of Ann Geddes. <laughs> this little thing she does, it's so cute. You'll be okay. In fact, you may get transformed by it. You may actually come out stronger, better, and even more mature than you even imagined as a human being. The important thing in life, in my opinion, you need to see yourself stronger, not as a victim or a sucker, but as someone who likes to see things differently. And that's, that's my view of all of this phenomena. See yourself different, better and stronger. And thank you for coming here today.